If you clicked on this video, you're probably looking to start a coaching business. Am I right to say that you are starting to get overwhelmed just by thinking about it? Thinking of all the things you need to do, all the boxes you need to tick. I'm going to stop you right there. Take a breath and relax a little bit. You probably don't need to do or have all those things. Hello friends and welcome to the Savvy Corner. My name is Alisa and I help coaches build successful coaching businesses. As part of my work, I talk to a lot of new coaches who want to start a business, but who don't know where to start or are simply paralyzed by how many things they think they need to do to get their business off the ground. If you've watched one of my previous videos, you know you only need three things to start a coaching business. The rest of the items on your never-ending list, you can either postpone or work on them as you go along. In today's video, I'm going to share with you six things that you don't need to start a coaching business. Let's jump straight in with the first one, which is a website. I ran my business without a website for almost a year, and you can do so too. In fact, leveraging a platform like LinkedIn was something that allowed me to build an audience and generate some traffic to my website when I finally created one. Having a website from the beginning means that you have to think about the copy that you put on that website and to create an offer, etc. Trying to do that before you start working with clients means that you will probably have to do it again once you understand what people want from you and how you can best serve them. It makes more sense to do some research, test the market, make some mistakes, and you will, and experiment a bit before you put together a website. Especially if you're going to pay someone to create a website for you, you want to make sure that whatever goes on that website is aligned with your business and appealing for your prospects. So you don't have to change it frequently as you learn more about your audience. That will cost you more money, take a lot of time that could be used in a more efficient way and probably cause you and the website developer a few headaches. Closely related to having a website is branding. Again, you don't need that from the beginning. It can be very tempting to choose a logo and a color palette, some fonts and templates for social media, having a photo shoot and so on. I get it, it's a creative process that can be very exciting for a new coach, but it's also a distraction and a cost that you don't need when you're just starting out. Prospects are more interested in what you have to say and how you can help them solve a problem than they are on your logo and color palette. Branding is nice to have and you can certainly think about it later, but it is not necessary to start a coaching business. Speaking of prospects, you might think that you already need an audience before you start a business. It would be good if you had one for sure, but it is not necessary. I started my coaching business with absolutely no audience and I grew my network as I was building the business. And you can definitely do the same. I want to add something here because I see it with my clients all the time. They usually start a business while they are still employed, like I did, and they are nervous about what their colleagues and their boss might think if they see them posting and writing about coaching on LinkedIn or on a different platform. I would always recommend to be transparent with your existing company about starting a coaching business and even discuss with them if there is a potential conflict of interest there and how to resolve it. In my experience, employers are usually okay with this, especially if your work as a coach doesn't compete with what they're doing. But just to be on the safe side, have that conversation with them. It will make you feel a lot more confident about your online activity and who knows, maybe you get some work as a coach inside the organization. Okay, coming back to the topic of having an audience, you don't need one. And the advantage of not having an audience when you start the business is that you can build that audience based on what you have to offer versus creating an offer that the audience wants, which is what people with a large following need to do, whether that offer resonates with them or not. If you're enjoying the video so far, I would appreciate it if you gave it a big thumbs up and consider subscribing. It really helps to support the channel and I thank you in advance if you do. Another thing you don't need before starting a business is a finished coaching qualification. Notice that I didn't say you don't need a qualification at all. 
I think it's extremely important to qualify as a coach and to understand what coaching is if you're going to start a coaching business. But you don't need to wait until you are fully qualified to start. That is what I did. I started the business and I built it as I was studying for my qualification and I am so glad I did. It gave me the opportunity to play, to experiment and make mistakes while I was a student. I also had the huge advantage of having worked on my business for nine months when I qualified, which made a big difference when it came to getting clients, how much I was charging for my services and my confidence in those prices. For those of you watching this video who are already a fully qualified coach, you might be tempted to think that you need more coaching skills or qualifications before you can start a coaching business. Please don't fall into that trap. Starting and running a coaching business requires skills that are very different from coaching. I will link a video here where I talk about the skills every coach needs to be successful in their business. But in a nutshell, you don't need more coaching skills. You need business development skills. If you are looking to invest in your development, I suggest you invest in learning about what it takes to build a coaching business and work with someone who has the knowledge and experience to guide you through the process. Someone like me, for example. I work with coaches in a variety of ways that suits most budgets, from webinars and masterclasses to more in-depth courses and one-to-one -one coaching and mentoring packages. Please get in touch if you want to discuss how I can help you. The next aspect that could prevent you from starting your coaching business is that you are not yet an expert in your field. This is a chicken and egg dilemma. You don't start because you're not an expert and you can only become an expert if you start and continue to practice and learn as you go along. Every expert started as a novice. And as long as you are transparent with your audience and clients about where you are on your coaching journey, you can absolutely start a business before you have extensive expertise in your field. Sometimes not being an expert acts as an excuse not to start a coaching business because we are afraid. What if people don't want to buy my services? What if I become the ridicule of my colleagues and friends, etc.? I talk more about the fear of starting a business and how to overcome it in this video. I also recently filmed a video on how to gain credibility as a new coach and get taken seriously even if you don't have a lot of coaching experience. If you're still nervous and you think you should learn more before you start a business, I have an entire playlist ready for entrepreneurship where I talk about the practicalities of starting a business and the implications you need to be aware of. I will link it for you in the description box below. However, no matter how much you read and how many videos you watch, how many extra qualifications you get, you will only truly learn about running a business by actually doing it. I hope this video was helpful to point out some of the things you don't need to worry about when getting your coaching business off the ground. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, check out these other two videos as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Alisa and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.